So I'm here today to talk to you about a couple things. I was going to say the good, the bad, the ugly. So I'm going to go with the ugly, the bad, the good. Then I'm going <clears> to <throat> mix it up a little bit with some casino stuff. And then I'm going to spice it up at the end with some medicinal marijuana. So uh, it's, it, we're going to have a lot of fun today. And uh, I don't know how to work this thing, but I'll figure it out if I don't. I have some slides up here in the back. You will never be able to see them, so just bear with me. I'll try to work through them real quick, and then we're gonna, I'll take any question you have for me. Uh, let me just make sure I have this right. Okay, here we go. So what do, you, uh, what do public officials owe you? The truth. What is the purpose of government? Emergency services, crime prevention, health and education, growth, public infrastructure. What have Orange County, how have Orange County officials acted in the last few years? This is our fun balance, and I, and I have to bring up the bad stuff first. So that's why we have breakfast meetings, not evening meetings, because then the bar will be open. So just bear with me. I try to make a lighter thing of, of, of a bad situation. But the fun balance over the years, which is the savings account for the county, has been depleted. And we're really, it says $21 million right now. We probably are not going to have anything to use by the end of this year. And that's because of other things I'm going to talk about later on. So really, over the last few years, in particular the last three years, we, the county government has budgeted $40 million on the average every year to close that budget gap rather than either cut expenses or raise revenues, which is taxes or find other ways of doing it. So here we are today, uh, budgeted to date. This is sales tax, the top part. Uh, they, for the 2014 budget, which I'm living through right now, we have $104 million was budgeted for sales tax. Uh, we've actually, year to date, received 97 um, was, uh, was ta sales tax. We're 7 million today down in what was budgeted. And it's estimated by the end of the year we'll be 14 million down. So that $20 million surplus from the rainy day fund by the end of the year will be wiped out be to make up for the sales tax uh, that was overestimated. It's not that sales are uh, overall down. Uh, it is kind of a flat year. They're feeling it all over the state. It's that the uh, the, uh, let me just get the back part. It's that the sales tax were overestimated. So that's really where we are with this budget crisis. So you have 40 million of surplus that we've used for the last three years to balance the budget that's not available. So that's a $40 million gap you don't have. Plus, now you have to throttle back your sales tax, which was overestimated, at least $12 million. That's $52 million right there. On the bottom was an unrealistic budget for 2014. I'll give you an example. Uh, the, the jail overtime the, at, at the jail is $2.1 million a year, and it sounds like a huge number. It's a big operation. Uh, the overtime, the actual for 2013 was 2.7. Budgeted for 2014 was 1.6. I'm already underwater. So the budget that I have for this year is not balanced, and as we stand today, we will finish 2014 in a red. So just take a deep breath. We're going to get through this. Even the legislators own auditors. I, uh, the county executive's office and the county government has an independent audit done, and, they, and that's the check and balances of government. And my colleague, Steve Rush, is here, the chairman of the legislature. Him and I are partners. Nothing I'm saying here is a smack to him. Him and I are working through this together. We're taking a lot of hits for it, but it's responsible government. We're going to get through this. So this is what O'Connor Davies said. This is the auditor for the county. Uh, as we've stated in previous years, the county has been successful in re, uh, regenerating its fund balance, but this trend has reversed itself over the last two fiscal years, 11 and 12. The county should be cognizant going forward and consider a multi-year budget plan. We don't have a multi-year budget plan. We're putting it together now. It wasn't in the past. Here's what Moody said about Orange County as a result of fiscal gimmicks. We just got downgraded earlier this year, if anybody doesn't know. Moody's is our basically the credit rating if people don't follow it. A lot of people know S&P. Moody's does a lot of municipal work. Uh, so Moody said the county's downgrade reflects ongoing multi-year trend of operating deficits and decline in revenue levels. So basically our, our revenues have gone down. Our tax base has gone down 25% in the last five or six years. We all know that. It's been a bad economy, and we're getting out of it. But the county and most, a lot of governments haven't reacted to it. We're reacting to it now. And I'm going to get happy news. I see everybody frowning. Um, what can the private sector do instead of the public sector? Policing? No. And I, we do do security work. But I mean, as far as the police on the street, you can't substitute that with the private sector. 
Uh, own and ma maintain public bridges and, 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 and roads? No, we, get, we don't do that, okay? You can't privatize it. That's, that's a municipal responsibility. Operate golf courses? Yes. We're considering um, one of our golf courses at least to see if we can privatize it. But as many people know, and if you haven't, they did a big uh, article in the Times in the recent about the, the declining golf industry. And there's three factors. I can get into it if you guys are avid golfers and want to know why there's not many people on the golf course anymore. Um, the other thing is operate airports. We could privatize airports. It's a process, but we have a serious problem because over the last decades, we've taken tens and tens of millions of dollars from the FAA for the Orange County Airport. I'm not talking about Stewart. I'm talking about Orange County Airport. And uh, so, so do we give up? No. We make changes. Do, can we privatize nursing homes? Yes. Orange County has 10 nursing homes. Nine of these facilities serve our seniors without county taxes. One of them does. You guys, I, nobody knows that issue. It's out there more than anything, and it is what it is. So what did Moody's just say with Rockland County? Rockland County hit rock bottom. And somebody earlier from Orange and Rockland asked me about how are the relationships with the other counties. It is bulletproof. Ed Day, the new county executive down in Rockland County, great guy, serious problems like us. He's getting out of his problems. Mike Hine, Ulster County, just north of us. Serious problems a couple of years ago. They've turned that ship around, and they're heading in wonderful direction in every different facet of government there. And here's what Moody said about Rockland County just about a month or so ago. The positive outlook reflects our expectation that the current budgeting practices will continue, resulting in improved financial results in 2014 and 15. Additionally, the transfer of the mental health unit and the sale of the nursing home if successful, will likely result in significant savings over time. Everybody's getting out of the business, okay? It's, it, you know, the, the issue was, mis, uh, you know, was, was I, I think, mishandled over the last three years, so the message was wrong, but everybody's getting out of the business, and we're going to talk a little bit about that later on. Here's what Ulster County's daily newspaper said to Daily Freeman about privatization of their nursing home. By all accounts, the concerns and fears that surrounded the debate over whether the county should sell its nursing home to a profit-making company have proven to be unfounded. In fact, the president of the homeowners group, the, the men and women that are cared for at the Golden Hill Nursing Facility in Ulster County, fought vehemently against Mike Hine about privatization, says it's never been better, and he apologized for fighting against the thing. That's a big message, because everybody's fearful, and I understand why they're fearful. Selling value, and, I, and again, I'm going to get through this, and, and I know I'm spending time on it, but it's a big part of the budget. Uh, just like Rockland and Ulster County legislatures have done, uh, we did uh, our LDC earlier by a simple majority. What was offered uh, for Valley View in the past, 2013, was $19 million. Last week, the record reported, and I think the public, uh, other news agencies, and it made public, that we got offered between 25 and $30 million for the nursing home. Some of the bidders said they would keep all the employees. Some people said they would keep most. Some even put a number. There's a little over 400. One of them said 383. So maybe they did their homework or they just pulled that number out. But this is a comfortable thing rather than putting people on the street, especially when we have little options going forward. Here's the real solutions that I've proposed so far and with my colleague uh, Steve Brescia, the CERT team, the Contract Evaluation Review Team. We have hundreds of millions of dollars in contracts a year, hundreds of millions. And now we are sharpening our pencil, just like many of you have or had your clients say, look, I'll keep your contract, but you've got to reduce it by 10%. That's what we're doing here. We're looking at every contract with a, you know, with a magnifying glass, and we have a team of all different types of people on this board looking at these contracts. Second thing was the retirement incentive. It was enacted last week. Everybody said it was going to be a failure, even the people that voted for it. Steve and I pushed it through. We've already had over 30 people, according to Steve Gross, might be even higher, 40 people. They said we wouldn't get a dozen, okay? Uh, so, so it's a good thing. The last thing you want to do is fire people or put people on the street. So if you can get people to retire, and it's, a, it's in a comfortable situation when you talk about the private sector where many people don't have those incentives, it's a different world in the public sector. Fortunately or fortunately, I say unfortunately. But it's a good thing and we're getting people to leave voluntarily. The bottom thing is the workforce reductions. We have to reduce the workforce. I'm not talking 10 people. I'm not talking 20 people. I'm talking hundreds of people to get through this year. The slide before, I told you, Valley View could be privatized and you can keep those people working. 
Uh, I'm telling you that people are voluntarily retiring. That's good stuff. That minimizes any type of layoffs or workforce reductions if we have to do them. I proposed it, Steve told me and, and, and uh, the minority leader to bring it to the legislature. We even had majority of the legislature voted for it. We're gonna lay off people, 50 people. We targeted them. It came to the legislative floor. Everybody ran for the hills. Uh, I was up, the, the only two people that spoke in favor of it was Steve and I, and uh, we took the arrows for it, but we're big boys, we can deal with that. But it's eventually gonna have to happen. Can the private sector really run a nursing home? I mentioned earlier, you got Campbell Hall, you got Alant, there's probably people in this room that work for some of these places, Alant at Metal Hill, Glen Arden, Highland Rehab Center, Montgomery, uh, Shriver, and St. Joseph, St. Joseph's Place. Oh, I hit the button too much, so. Uh, we need a broader vision for health care, urging uh, the legislature to reconsider the vote. It's, it's being appealed, but this is what I'm just giving you guys a foreshadowing of what the budget's going to be in the, in the future, because I'm going to give you what the alternatives are to it, and it's going to impact your wallet. Uh, asking bidders to explain the broader vision of the health care. So we got these bidders, 25 to 30 million. We got the synopsis. You're going to keep some employees, keep all. Give us a breakdown. Give us these promises. We're going to make sure our people are protected and the people being cared for are protected. And the third thing is uh, partnering with community assets. St. Luke's Cornwall, Toro, Col uh, Toro College coming up to Middletown, uh, you know, Crystal Run, any of these healthcare professionals, um, Newburgh Community Health Center, any, if there's a way we can marry them in different aspects, we're gonna do it. So let's look at the broader vision for job growth. Here's all the companies that we've talked about. There's a ton more. People that have already came here and have established here, Mediacom, that has did their successful move to Blooming Grove, I was there recently, they are hiring people by the droves. Good jobs. Mount St. Mary grads, I remember Rocco made it a point to walk me around the facility, say, these people all work for your college that you, were, that you went to, that they just graduated Mount St. Mary College. That's a good thing. So I said, what, th these are some of the things that, that we can do in county government, refocusing on what the government is really intended to do. And Ralph, I apologize, you got to see oh, the better side of me. But um, <laughs> the, you know, improved roads, bridges, and highways. We've been to meetings, Steve and I, where people say, you know, we're in financial crisis, stop paving roads. Stop fixing bridges. I'm going to be announcing a bridge next week with some of the legislators that hasn't been open since Sandy. That's embarrassing in America. It's embarrassing in Orange County. So we're going to get back to where we need to be and focus on it. Third thing is creation of economic development hotspots. Last month, the IDA um, came on board and passed a shovel ready program, something that Maureen Hallahan has been barking about forever. I was barking about since January. And we're going to put that to work. In addition to that, <clears throat> and when you talk about economic development hotspots, the county is one of the largest landowners. We are sitting on property and not just swamp land that nobody wanted, good developable property. Set aside for water, set aside for development. We are going to get those properties shovel ready. So on A, it increases my value when we sell it to the private sector. And B, it's productive and back on the tax rolls. This is what we should be doing and we haven't. We're going to get on that. Casino gaming. I love all these newspaper articles. Tax breaks here, tax breaks there. The spirit of the legislation, whether Sullivan, Ulster, everybody deserves one, everybody needs help. But when you need to give tax breaks to a, a, a casino to operate, what is the long-term sustainability to you? And, and this is the thing, I'm not trying to beat up anybody, but in eight years, New York City is gonna be online with casinos. 80% of the people that we're trying to target in this region are the casinos, whether it's Sullivan, Ulster, or Orange, are from Manhattan, the five boroughs. So in eight years, they're gonna have casinos down there. We better have a plan to make sure that this is sustainable. That's why nobody likes to talk about it, but it is really the crown jewel of why Orange County is one of the hotspots for casinos. We went from zero to six in six months. We had six casino applications. In January, Maureen and I were looking at each other. What are all these casino guys calling us? And it turns out, Woodbury Commons. Hate to say it, people like it or not, you know, might not like the traffic. We love the sales tax. 13 million people a year estimated come there. That is a feedstock to continuing a casino. That is really the reason why it's set it aside. Geographics, being closer to the city helps, but that is really one of the, the trend setters. And we can go into that if you guys wanna ask questions later. Uh, shop local, the P card. I think I talked about this at the Alliance for Balanced Growth. When I spoke here in December, 
before I got my hands on the controls of the county and getting the day-to-day -day operations, I talked about doing business more with the local businesses, the chamber, the partnership, all the different organizations that have members that are business owners. So we, we, we created, a, uh, we, we signed on to this program called the P-Card because the worst way to do business with the county, the worst thing about it is it takes us 90 days to pay you. Small business with four or five employees can't wait 90 days to get paid. So a P-Card is like a credit card. You pay, you get paid almost instantaneously. You have to wait 90 days out. So we started utilizing that and it's getting busier and busier. So gets you paid quicker, gets me rewards for the county, money back, cash back in our pockets, just a right way and a new way of doing things. So we're doing that. Um, and Lynn, don't let me forget about our conversation yesterday about doing business and, and uh, well, I'll get to that. I'm, I just keep looking at you as a new, as a new president. Um, our responsibility to taxpayers is to be honest about the present, to offer real solutions for the future and not empty rhetoric. You see all these crazy things. Money's gonna come here. The pot of gold, golden goose, not there, guys. Uh, vote on solutions and not delay and pass the buck. This is going about, this is talking about the budget going into the future. I'm gonna present a budget in October 1st that's gonna be balanced. Treat every taxpayer funded asset as if we would our own, the government center. Things it, 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 it didn't come to where it is today overnight. And you saw in the newspaper, it, it is moving forward and we're prepared on any avenue to move forward with a project at that site. So prioritize our spending as if we would our own. And that's getting government back to the basics, public safety, public works, things like that. When you call 911, you want an answer. When you want somebody to fight uh, that somebody was wronged in court, you want somebody from the DA's office to be there fighting for you. That's the type of things we're doing. Um, the options, the alternatives, if we do not do these difficult decisions, sh uh, shaving parts of the county government that we shouldn't be in, I shouldn't be competing against nine private nursing homes in the county. I shouldn't be competing against other type of industries in here. You're not competing against my police. You're not competing against the public works and you're not competing against the 911. So we're gonna get down to the basics. The, the option that, the alternatives to that are two. Deficit financing, which is borrowing for today's bills because you're irresponsible on the backs of the future. I'll veto that. Great thing about being a county executive is I got the veto pen. So unless there's an overall majority, it's, I'm gonna veto it. Steve's not supportive of it, I'm not supportive of it, and I don't think majority of the legislature is, but I've heard it buzzing around. The other thing is tax hikes, and I'm not talking 2%, 5%, 10%, I'm talking 50, 60% tax hikes. I don't know if, if Mike Benor is here, I was gonna use him as an example, but you can imagine what that could do to a business this size, business that's got one employee, it's not happening. If there's one collective thing that was said to this legislature, I mean from, from this Chamber of Commerce, from its members in the poll, was taxes, taxes, those are the first two issues, and the third one was government getting in their back. I'm gonna get out of your way, get off your back, and I'm gonna do everything I can to cut the cost. I'm 40 years old, most of you guys know I got two young kids at home and I just have a one month old baby that makes three. I'm not going anywhere. I have a vested interest in this county, but I'm going to fight to make sure that it's affordable to live here. That's the number one issue. Ask Sean Patrick Maloney, ask Nan Hayworth. They're in the hot of a, of, a, of a congressional race. It's the number one issue on people's minds. Can I afford to stay here? Is my neighbor's house gonna be foreclosed on? Is my neighbor gonna lose his job? So that's the vision, that's the background I have when I make any type of decision. So we're gonna move forward. I don't know what's on the screen, hold on a second. Everything that the Chambers member have done for the last six years is now being done under my leadership. Like I told you, sharpening the pen, looking at things differently. Orange County is a community open for business. We know that, and we can do this together. So this is our model, and we're gonna continue this, and we're gonna build on this. Welcome to Orange County, community open for business. I promised you earlier that I would hit a couple things. I'm gonna, uh, I have to, I'll stop with the chamber, but I'm gonna start before that with the medical marijuana. Casinos came from left field, medical marijuana, came from the other side of the field. Uh, my wife was going into labor, I got a call one day from Albany and they said, look, some county executives are morally against medicinal marijuana. There's gonna be five locations in New York State. We're trying to take your temperature. You against it, you for it. I said, I'm not a marijuana guy. I, I saw the thing on Sandra Gupta, if you haven't seen it on CNN, it is a life changer because he's an MD who was against it, said, I don't believe it. 
not, not a mint marijuana guy. The guy was probably straight as you can in college. But he went and looked at stuff and looked at the impacts on kids and other things, and it, and it turned him around. So I said, Orange County is open for business. Call Maureen. We said, let's, let's see what they have to say. So long story short, uh, two weeks later, I'm in ShopRite getting groceries, and a lady comes up. She goes, Mr. Newhouse, I live in Chester. And she says, uh, I, have a, I have a son who has a severe form of epilepsy. And uh, I think he was, he's 11 years old, and he has like the mentality of a six-year-old because he's got seizures every five minutes. Now, the only way to, to help this kid is to get him, and, and, and that she said, it's proven across the country, parents are moving to Colorado and places, is to get him um, medicinal marijuana. This isn't smoking a joint. This isn't Cheech and Chong rolling up, put people putting on Bob Marley. This is, this is a pill, and Maureen and I joke about this and I, uh, when we talk about this to other people. Um, but this is a, mostly like a pill form or ingested. I'm not a doctor, so I know more, M Michelle Corey's like, oh my God, this guy's butchering the medicinal marijuana argument. But here's the deal. If we, we, made a, we wrote a letter to the governor asking for the Department of Health to, uh, the, the Commissioner of Health to allow in emergency situations people that are dying of a severe illness or a kid that could be impacted like this to be able to do a trade for the next 18 months until Orange County comes, until New York State comes online, sorry, with a, with a program. And uh, to that venture, uh, the governor wrote a letter um, uh, asking for that support. So I think that's, that's a human thing. The second thing on it is we have now three different locations in Orange County looking at medicinal marijuana. So, and it's, and it's a very highly regulated industry. You, you're probably not even gonna know what's happening, um, but uh, it, it's just another avenue that you need to be cognizant of as business leaders. When I spoke at the uh, Leadership Orange and the Building Trades uh, in the last two weeks, I spoke at uh, Breakfast for Leadership Orange and the Building Trades, I also mentioned the, um, and I know my staff's gonna freak out about this, uh, but about the border kids, the kids that are coming up from um, Guatemala and through Mexico looking for places to be located. It's a very hot issue. Why do we care about it here in Orange County? Because the federal government is looking at places throughout the country to locate these children. And, um, you know, it's been come up in staff, to, uh, in my staff meetings and, and other agencies have called me and saying, you know, how are you guys gonna react in Orange County? You know, you've seen how they reacted in other places. People chanting, beating them up, um, beating up the buses and, and uh, protesting them. That's not the American way. It, whether, when they come over the border, that's not my problem to be the border police. We are way far away from Texas and the, any of the bordering states. But when those kids come here, just like most of our families come here, you beat them. Can you imagine scared kids getting in a bus? Go home, go home. That's not us. So. I'm just telling you, if, if I'm not saying it's happening, but they, it's happening in other places around us than where they're gonna be located at, and if they're here, we're gonna help them. And uh, the federal government, hopefully, is gonna pick up the tab. If not, um, it, it's, just, it's just the nature of what's going on in our country. It's a global world right now. And I think is, uh, there's a human side of this that we have to be uh, cognizant of. I said I would finalize with the chamber. I am 100% committed to this chamber of commerce, and I always have. Harry Poor was my first boss out of uh, college, and I worked in the city hall with him. And the one thing he forced me to do, back then he forced me to, I was 21 years old, the last thing I wanted to do was get up at 7 in the morning and hear John D'Ambrosio give jokes about business. <laughs> I was usually coming in at 5 in the morning. So, uh, but, but it, he, I've been going for almost 20 years now, about 18, I'm not that old. But I'm committed to this business community. This, com this, this, this community is the backbone of America. It is. We know it. I'm not trying to blow smoke up your backsides. You know it. And I'm committed to Lincion. We met yesterday for an hour yesterday. We're going to make this work. We're going to turn, I mean, what was that? An hour and a half. Hour and a half. I, got, I got in trouble for missing one of my budget meetings for it, but uh, I, I know you're friends with the person whose budget it was, and you can help me out on that. Um, but we are making some major moves here in Orange County. We're turning the ship around. You know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the district attorney. You got a brand new district attorney, brand new county clerk. Annie Rabbit has revolutionized the county clerk's office. There's going to be changes. Just like when uh, Henry Ford had the assembly line, people were upset about progress. It's not easy to make change, but it's something that has to be done. So you got people like Annie that is restructuring the whole county clerk's office, making it more user friendly for you. That's what it's for. It's for you, not for her. So I'm proud of the job she's doing. 
The, the sheriff's been doing a great job, we know that. He's turned that whole sheriff's department around. Every certification on the rainbow they have there. But then you go to the DA and I. We have a very close relationship. We bonded a lot in the campaign trail. We were friends before we ran for office. And I'll give you some, some highlights. In the, in, the, in the Mid Hudson News today, it talks about the prosecutions of these major grub, uh, drug crimes up 100, over 100% just in this year. 200. 200%. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> so, so the question I ask Dave is crime up or are we just being more proactive? And the answer is what, Dave? More proactive. More proactive. We, we initiated um, through the DSS department uh, a month and a half ago an anti-fraud thing. The thing that ticks people off more than taxes, or just about, is hearing that somebody's abusing the system. And there's areas all over the county, we know the hot spots, I can't go into it, but let me tell you, we did our first net about a month and a half ago. The sheriff, the DA, everybody together working together on this, the, dis, the, the uh, um, DSS office, we have a great staff. Uh, the first net, there's gonna be more coming. But since then, we've gotten tens of thousands of dollars of checks in the mail from people. Hi, I've been using the system. I shouldn't have been. Please accept this as, you know, you're not going to prosecute me. Now, I'm not telling you what's going to happen to those individuals, good or bad, but it sends a message that we're not going to tolerate this anymore. And that's really what this is all about here. I see a bright future for this county, guys. I see a bright future for this Chamber of Commerce. Businesses are coming, and I'm going to leave you on one little statistic. People know I get a lot of union support. I get a lot of non-union support. The building trades in the Hudson Valley, and I'll give you a particular. I got this from Mike Gatos, the iron worker, are maxed out with workers, with work right now. They are bringing in workers from the North Country, from the Western Tier, from Long Island, and what's, uh, uh, what's really paramount is the five boroughs. You know if you work in New York City, I don't care if you're uh, a lawyer or if you're a uh, construction worker, you're making more money in New York City than you are here. When people in New York City want to transfer up here for work, that shows you something. So uh, we have to be on our A game and we will. And I need all of you. It's not just Lynn and I and Tom and Ralph and my staff and, and, and Steve Russia and Dave Hoobler. But any suggestions you have, we're open. It's going to be a little bit of a, uh, of a rough budget season, but we'll get through it. I'm going to get a balanced budget done one way or another. Everybody knows it. Uh, so it's a bright future for this county.